we're going to go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for coming today. I hope you had a good week. We had a good week, actually. Uh, yesterday was a long day. Good night. My, my head's still a little foggy. We were, uh, what was it, eight hours? Eight hours there at a wrestling match. Eight hours. It was grueling. I felt like I wrestled. But, uh, oh my goodness. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, Kevin wrestled. Uh, uh, Kevin Brown wrestled. And uh, and he, uh, he was the very last match of the day. His, he was in the finals, the very last <laughs> match of the day, and he won the gold medal yesterday. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's funny, we, uh, there's about, it seems like about two hours between matches, and uh, it's one, there's three mats, and you're wa watching one wrestling match, and it's like you glaze over after a while. You're just watching one horrible, painful train wreck after another. Uh, but uh, anyways, but he finally wrestled the last match, a big boy from Cedar Cliff High School. And the kid had a pretty good record, and, and, uh, and Kevin went out and, and finally pinned him in the second period. Pinned him in the second period, and then Kevin jumped up, and we almost, I almost fell down over the bleachers. Donna, she whacked me in the back. <laughs> whacked me in the back. And I started to stand, and I went forward, whoa, whoa, and screaming. And uh, Lachelle was right in front of me, and she rarely has a lot of emotion. She was half out of her mind when Kevin pinned this boy. Pin this boy, and then Kevin runs over to his littler coach Dom and throws him up in the air. And then he runs over to his big coach, which is a 300 pounder, and Kevin jumps in the air. And this guy's like in the air just a little bit, and he's gonna catch Kevin. <laughs> and Kevin smashes him on the mat backwards. And the entire gymnasium went, oh, like that. That was more worth watching than Kevin wrestling. But uh, no, it was a fun, fun day, especially when someone you know uh, wins the gold. And so he'll move on next week till, uh, He'll move on next week to, uh, uh, what is it called, regionals. Regionals now, and uh, so we're excited for that and to see what happens there. So anyways, uh, we have some great kids that do a lot of great things. Uh, so, and their futures are bright, and we're just rooting for them that they live for Christ with their lives. So, anyways, uh, uh, we're gonna open a word of prayer and get started today. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for how good you are to us. We ask you, Lord, to even as we sing and to the audience of one today, Lord, we love you. Thank you for what you have done for us and forgiven our sin and been able to, we were able to make our lives whole again through you, Lord Jesus. We ask you to do that. We ask you to encourage our hearts with what we're about to sing and even hear from your word. We ask you to do that. Thank you for how good you are to us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, go ahead and stand to your feet. We are going to sing some songs this morning, songs of worship to Jesus.
So I encourage you to take some notes and just think about some of the things that are said. So, so anything that is said today even uh, that uh, you would say, well, we're already married. Well, honestly, this applies to those that are already married. So uh, anyways, but uh, we are in a series called Save the Day. Save the Day. Today is part two called Three Qualities You Need Before Marriage. And before you get married, three qualities you need before you get married. And if you're already married and you didn't have these qualities, you still need them now So as you're married. So anyways, uh, I hope that maybe because of this series, God would urge maybe some of you, even some of you at home, to get married. I do. That's not a joke. I would hope that maybe God would encourage you. Uh, maybe you found someone and you're just questioning. Maybe that would help you push you over the edge and say, I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to get married. So I would hope that maybe it would urge you to do that. Then on the flip side, I hope and pray that some of you that are dating, maybe uh, even at home, some of you that are dating will actually break up because of this message series. I know it sounds heartless, it does, it sounds heartless, but uh, I don't want it to be, because the reason why you would need to break up is because you can't marry the right person if you're dating the wrong person. So, that's my logic behind it, and I, please don't be offended with that, but I put that statement in your notes. So, we're talking about real stuff as we talk about relationships today. This series is called Save the Date. Save the Date, and we're talking about dating, sex, and uh, marriage in this series. Things that loads of people talk about. Loads of people talk about those things, not necessarily uh, publicly, but they talk about them privately, things like that. We're talking about things that loads of people talk about. And one of the questions that people are asking, that people do ask, is this. How do I find the right person to marry? How do I know? Because it's a pretty hefty commitment. Marriage. How do I find the right person to marry? Which is a very good question. Back in the old days, so if someone would to think about that, how do I find the right person? Uh, back in the old days, you would... Just do something like this. Just ask somebody out. That's old day stuff. That's old school stuff. You would just ask them out uh, on a date. Now, you get on a dating app. You get on a dating app, type in the local locale where you're at, uh, like Christian Mingle or, or even this. Maybe you, you're tricky enough to do this. You sit, uh, sit next to a single in church and wear expensive cologne. Like Titus, he's into cologne. He... <laughs> yeah. And he, he always, every time I give him a hug, I smell a different cologne on him. And uh, he said, Bunk, I get these at Marshall's on sale. Get some Marshall's. So, and he turned me on to that. So, anyway, but, uh, but, uh, <coughs> Or you can walk up to somebody in a store and you can say, hey, you're nine out of 10 and I think I'm the one you're looking for. <laughs> nah, don't do that. Don't do that. Someone would look at me and if I said that, they would just run. That's my luck. They would just run or just call police, like store security or something. If I would say that, I was never, ever slick like that with the girls. So uh, I always needed like a Judah. I always hung with a guy, John King, that was so smooth with the girls. And he would be my mouthpiece. Because I just couldn't. I just couldn't do it. Couldn't put the words together. So, folks, loads of people ask, how do I find the right person? How do I find the right person? What we uh, want to do is suggest maybe a more important question than how do I find the right person. A more important question 
uh, is instead of saying, how do I find the right person? I would suggest that you start with asking, how do I become the right person? How do I become the right person? I think that's a better start than how do I find the right person? How do I become the right person? And uh, the reason is this, that we would think that way is because of this reason. You don't typically attract what you want. You don't typically attract what you want. You attract what you are. Try that one on for size. You say, no. Oh yeah, it's true. Generally speaking, it is so true. You can trick some people sometimes, but you generally attract what you are. Honestly, I say this, I know Donna says, no, it's hers to tell and all that stuff about our marriage. But listen, that's why Donna and I got together. Donna had a rebellious spirit in her. You know I did. I had a upside down rebellious spirit in me and she had a rebellious spirit in her. So you typically attract what you really are. And honestly, I saw that in her. I saw how uh, like she had this attitude with, with her mom and, and, and not necessarily her dad, but with her mom and that type of thing. And I wasn't attracted to that, but I thought, huh, somehow we fit together like peanut butter and jelly here pretty good. So, but uh, nonetheless, uh, you attract what you are. It may sound a bit harsh, but when it's all said and done, you may want one thing in someone you're looking for. You may want one thing, but you generally attract what you are more than attract what you want. You attract what you are. I heard a story told, and I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard it told, a young girl went off to college and, and she, was, she came from a pretty conservative home background, being raised in a Christian home, and she gave in to the party life, like many do in, in college. They give in to the party life, and she partied pretty hard in that college life. She eventually met a, a great Christian guy and soon told her mom about this guy that she met. She told him about the guy she met. She said, Mom, he's amazing. Everything I ever wanted. He even loves the Lord Jesus. He loves Christ. Can you imagine that, Mom? He's a spiritual leader. He's very respectful. And he's so cute on top of that so cute mom this may be the guy that i want to marry mom got very quiet mom got very quiet and said this to her daughter sweetheart please understand a guy like that is probably not looking for a girl like you sadly she told her daughter that not looking for a girl like you in other words the way you're living now isn't going to attract someone who is following Jesus. You're not going to attract that because you attract really who you are. Who you are. Most of the time, now sometimes there's a little confusion there and someone puts on a good this and that and act and, and you can carry it off. Uh, I had real work. When I was trying to convince Donna to get closer and closer, I had real work to do. I just shut my mouth a lot because I had a lot to say about everything. And I just shut my mouth a lot because I knew I'm going to put my foot in it and I'm going to just create problems if I just, so I just shut my mouth and I still had trouble convincing her, I'm the man for you. So I had trouble convincing her of that. So, but uh, uh, listen, the way you're living now isn't going to attract someone who is following Jesus if you're not living for Christ. The way you're living now. Because you don't just attract what you want. You tend to attract what you are. What you are. That's something to be so aware of even when you're younger and you're looking to go forward. 
Uh, so I think about that. One wise man said this, a good goal is to become the type of person, the person, become the type of person that you're looking for. Looking for, the type of person that you're looking for. Not necessarily you are. Become that type of person that you're looking for. Put that in your notes. The title of today's message is this. Three qualities you need before marriage. So we're going to dive in that way. Three qualities you need before marriage. So when talking about dating, there are so many conflicting messages. When you talk about dating and trying to connect with other people, uh, especially the opposite sex. So many conflicting messages. One youth pastor will say, you shouldn't, you shouldn't date, you should just court because dating is not in the Bible. Okay, I'll give him that. Dating is not in the Bible. And one youth pastor will say that. Uh, so we hear that message, okay? I'm not gonna date, I'm gonna court. I'm gonna try and figure that one out, how to court. Uh, in a relationship. Then we watch The Bachelor on TV. The Bachelor on TV, The Bachelor teaches to casually date, make out with five different people, fall in love with two, and give the rose to one. <coughs> okay, if I ever get that opportunity, maybe I can hook up that way, you know, and find my true love on that TV show or something similar to that. Then, then after that's all done with the Black Bachelor, then you break up six months later. <laughs> or another pastor says to make a list of everything you want. Everything you want, make a list of everything you want, some pastor would say. Then even another pastor would say, oh, that's stupid, rip up that stupid list. You don't make a list. And then three friends, friends tell you to use dating apps. Three friends tell you that, and they just say, oh my goodness, we've had three single friends will tell you they have had such success. So they're continuing to be single. So they said that's, the, that's where the big fish are. That's where the big fish are on the dating apps. Use dating apps. Then two friends, two more friends come along, and they tell you that, you're not trusting God if you use dating apps. Then you say, oh, oh, I just started trusting God using dating apps. Now I'm not trusting God. Listen, it all can be incredibly confusing trying to find the one, trying to find someone to connect with to get married to. It can be confusing. So I would suggest that we go to the one that created relationships and we're going to try and go there and make some sense out of that who created relationships and created marriage in the first place we'll try that one let's get wisdom from the one who loves us most in uh in this message today first corinthians 7. first corinthians 7 it's a passage where we're start today and it's ch it's a chapter about relationships the Apostle Paul tells us this, uh, that being married is not the main purpose for our lives. Being married, you say, what? It's not. It's, the Apostle Paul tells us it's not the main purpose for our, our lives. Culture many times tells us that uh, the big win, culture tells us this, that the big win in life is marriage. Paul tells us something a bit different. In your notes, Paul tells us that being married is not the main purpose in life. So being married is not the end-all, be-all in life, or it's not our goal. I think about this, I think John the Baptist, you think about him, is a guy who prepared the way for Jesus. He wasn't married. I think about the Apostle Paul, who preached the gospel uh, to the Gentiles, they, God spoke to him and said, "This is you're going to speak to all the Gentiles, as many as you can in this world, about Christ, versus speaking to the Jews. He spoke to the Gentiles, uh, non-Jewish people. Uh, the Apostle Paul wrote half, over half of the New Testament. He wasn't married. 
Then we think about Jesus. Who was Jesus? Who was Jesus, the Savior of the world? He wasn't married. So to have a successful life and to, to actually carry out some things in this life and do things, even big things, you don't have to necessarily be married. So God's biggest dream for us is not for us all to be married. Notice how Paul said it in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 in verse 7 and 8. I have it. If you don't have your Bibles, I have it on the board for you. It says this. It says this. I wish that all of you were as I am. He was unmarried. But each of you has your own gift from God. One has this gift, another has that gift. Now to the unmarried and the widows, I say, it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. You think about that. Paul was saying that singleness was a gift. Listen, if God has given you that gift to stay single, by all means, stay single. If God is not, if he's not, if you don't have that urge pounding in your heart to get married, and maybe God has given you that single gift. There is nothing flawed in you that way. In fact, you have uh, 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 an extreme opportunity, extreme opportunity to serve Christ and to do all kinds of things in life if you're not drawn away because marriage is pretty complicated. And it takes a chunk out of your life uh, if, if you get married. I know that sometimes, listen, Paul was saying that singleness is a gift. And I know maybe if you're single, you, you say, well, sometimes it doesn't feel like a gift if you're single. But he goes on to say this in 1 Corinthians 7, verse 35. He says this in verse 35. He says, I'm saying this for your, for your own good, not to restrict you, but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the Lord what he's saying he said you don't have to do this but he's saying honestly if 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 you if you don't want to get married you don't have to get married he's saying but that you may live in a right way in undivided devotion to the lord folks in other words if you don't have a spouse or anyone dividing your attention you can give your life holy you can give your life holy to the lord Holy to the Lord in serving him. That's what the Apostle Paul was saying here. Essentially, Paul is saying being married is not our main purpose in this life. Our purpose in this life is to live with undivided devotion to Christ. Him being first place in our life. So instead of just looking for the right person, what we want to do Instead of just looking to be, to, to searching for the right person, we want to let God help us become the right person. Become the right person. We're going to look at three qualities in Scripture that we want to let God work in us so that we would become these three powerful qualities because these are three powerful qualities. In your notes, three qualities you need before marriage. So, so instead of just looking for the right person, it'll help us become the right person. So think about this. So before marriage, number one, become secure in Christ. Before marriage, become secure in Christ. So what do we know? So what we do know is this. There's a key thought. I put it in your notes. If you want to end up married and happy, start single and secure. Start single and secure. First find our, we first find our fulfillment in Christ. The reason this is so, so important is this. this. Have any of you, think about this, have any of you ever dated an insecure person? And I ask you not to look around, or please don't raise your hand or point at anybody right now. But have any of you known or dated insecure people, or even insecure friends? 
they will feel, and listen, don't do that. Don't point at them because they'll even feel more insecure. <laughs> so insecure people are constantly asking themselves. And you think about this, and I don't know you, what you really think privately in your head, but I want you to know this. Insecure people are constantly asking themselves and others, I wonder if they like me. I wonder if they like me. Or they ask directly, do you like me? Do you like me? And it's not just one time. They wonder that. Do you like me? Where were you? Who were you with? Who are you texting? Who in the world are you texting? What are you looking at on your phone when you're with someone? What are you looking at on your phone? Were you looking at him? No. Were you looking at her? Constantly, insecure people are wondering those things. Folks, when it comes to relationships, insecure people need more. They just need more, and they settle for less because they're insecure. They settle for less. There's always, they're always looking for outside assurance that they're liked or they're okay. And they're always looking for that outside. We, uh, please validate me. Please make me feel special. Insecure people. Tell me that you like me. They're looking for meaning in relationships. They have to have someone and they often settle for who's available. Insecure people. They often settle for who's just available. Folks, I have to say that I'm not trying to kill the idea that there's no meaning in relationship. Because that, honestly, after I wrote that, I sounded like, oh, you're just killing the idea that there's no meaning in relationship. And that, that is so not true because there is meaning in relationships. I love being, honestly, I love being with Donna. She's fun. She's pleasant uh, many times. She's pleasant. <laughs> and it's usually directly connected to how I am, to how I respond. And she's kind hearted. She's adventurous, even more than me. I'm thinking about our first trip over to Africa. We are on this pontoon boat in the ocean, and there are four foot swells. And I'm telling you, I thought, we're going down. We're going down. The pastor we was with, he was laying over my lap. He's giving all my glasses. And he's barfing over the side. Barfing over the side. And the diesel fumes are flowing, coming in the back. And I'm just sitting there like this, holding his glasses. I almost accidentally just whipped them in the water. Because I said, what am I holding glasses for? We're dead. And I look over to her, and she's just sitting like this, texting. Like this, texting. And I thought, is she delirious? Is she overcome with diesel fumes? No, she's adventurous. She's never afraid that way, for whatever reason. We go repelling down the side of a cliff. She's one of the first ones on the cliff. And I'm thinking, oh, crap. Now I got to do it. She did it and my legs are shaking and I can't let anybody see that my kids are all she went my kids all went now it's my turn and I just thought oh, stink why did we even come here because now I got to perform but the truth is she's adventurous and I like that that was an attract she's daring I think that she's beautiful and much much more but in all that I don't get my confidence and my security in Donna. I don't. I just honestly, privately, I just think I hit the jackpot because of what she is. And I like that. I like that so much. So there's meaning in relationship. And honestly, I didn't know all that before. We were so upside down in everything when we got married. And then we finally came to Christ. But... I don't get my confidence and security in Donna. I found that in Christ. I found that in Christ. The Apostle Paul tells us this in Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. He said, For in Christ 
all the fullness of the deity dwells in bodily form in Christ and he says and you have been made complete in Christ that's who the centerpiece is that's who the centerpiece is for us all in Christ if you are a Christ follower then it is in Christ everybody loves honestly everybody loves a good love story most people anyways here's a few quotes from I even think famous uh, movies I if, I don't know if you've ever seen the notebook many have seen the movie the notebook it's an older film uh, Pam is a pay oh there it is there it is so uh, Noah says this Noah says to the says this to her he says no matter what happens to us every day with you is the best day of my life every day best day of my life it's pretty corny but but i know if you let yourself go there you say oh my goodness it's so sweet what's wrong with me what's wrong with me but and then there's another one another movie quote is from the titanic titanic rose she's listen rose says to jack who is about to die Rose says that Jack is about to die. Rose is on a wooden plank or something, and Jack's in the water. And she says to Jack, who's about to die, hanging on a piece of wood, she says, I'll never let go. I promise. And then she lets go. <laughs> no, no, she does. She really, I'll never let go. And then she lets go. Folks. There was room on that plank. I always thought, oh, is she hogging the plank? A time like this, there's no time to hog the plank. You're gonna die. And I'll never let go, and she just lets him. So anyways, but if you're really into love stories, you probably didn't see that. You probably just said, oh my goodness, that is so beautiful. But it's just the way we look at things sometimes. Folks, those romantic thoughts and sayings give me, honestly, they do. If I let myself go there, and I try to for Donna's sake when we're watching, so I don't just sit there and go, oh, that's stupid. Because she's in a moment, and I just don't want to ruin it. Because I don't want her ruining all my murder mysteries. Like, Kevin, do you see the holes in this theory? Like, she has the ability to do that because she sees everything that's going on and I'm just caught up in the whole murder, who gets killed, who's accused, and he's not guilty. And then she'll tell me who's really the guy that killed everybody. So, but I don't want her to ruin that, so I don't ruin it for her. So, I, I, so it, it gives me some of the, the fuddies, fuzzies a bit, but it has been Christ who can and will complete you, not not all that stuff, even though you could even enjoy some of that. Marriage doesn't make you whole. Jesus Christ makes you whole. In our culture, everywhere you go, you hear counter-godly messages. In our culture, messages like, you can't be happy without a soulmate. You can't. You can't be happy without a soulmate. You hear that. You can't be happy without a soulmate. But folks, please know, single or married, the scripture says you are complete in Christ. You are complete in Christ Jesus. You have indescribable worth in God's eyes. Indescribable worth in God's eyes. There's the centerpiece. You don't need one more thing to be secure with the God of heaven. You don't. You have been made complete in Christ. Three qualities. Three qualities that you need before marriage. One is to become secure in Christ. Number two, we need, the thing we need before marriage is this, to become strong in character. Before marriage, become strong in character. Don't wait for a spouse to make you strong in character. Many times, most of the time, that will never happen. A spouse making you strong in character. A common perspective before marriage is this. A common perspective is this. I'm not married, so I'll do whatever I want. I'm not married. I'll do whatever I want. It's party time. Multiple partners. 
I'll do whatever I want. I'm not married. Later on, I'll settle down. And even later on, maybe I'll even do the church thing. And maybe I'll even do a little bit of the Jesus thing later on. Maybe. Right now, I'll live however I want. I'm not married. I'll live however I want. Folks, let me remind you that you do not build a life of righteousness on a foundation of sin. Never does that go together. You can never build a foundation of righteousness on a platform or a foundation of sin. Uh, you know, build a life of righteousness. What you're doing today, what you're doing today matters. It does. It matters. And today impacts tomorrow. What you want to be, listen, we want to become strong in character today. If you're single, you want to become strong in character today. So what does that look like, to become strong in character today? That's what it looks like. I love five qualities that the Apostle Paul highlights for Timothy. Young Timothy, he highlights five characters in, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It says, if you want to grow in character, grow in these five traits, he tells Timothy. It says this, in 1 Timothy 4, 12, he says, set an example of for believers in speech. Timothy was single at this point. Said, said for example, said, said an example for believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Listen, when we put, put it in words that we use today, try these. He says, grow in character in words that you speak. Grow in character that way, in words that you speak. What, listen, what comes out of your mouth? Oh, please know what the scripture says comes from your heart. What comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. Do you, is it what comes out of your mouth? Do you sound like a, a MA movie on Netflix? Is that what comes out of your mouth? Listen, that comes from your heart. I mean, don't deny it and don't make excuses for it. That's the deal. That's the deal. What comes out of your mouth comes from your heart. And then he talks about our behavior. Our behavior, our conduct. How is it? How do we live? Listen, it, it, it's reflected in our behavior, how we live. And then this, he says, the way we love. The way we love. Think about that. It says the greatest of these. Lists a long list of things in 1 Corinthians 13. And he says the greatest of these is love. Greatest of these is love. How do we treat others? With the love of God or with judgment? Listen, you don't have to wait to get married. In fact, it behooves you not to wait to get married to start on this stuff. Do it now. You'll attract someone like you then. If that's the case. If you even care. Or you can continue to live in a de de delusional idea with a delusional idea that you're going to get someone special when you are not all that special. When you're living for Christ or you're not living for Christ. Start living that way now. You will be attracted to someone because many times you'll attract someone like you. Just like you. So think about that. We also want to grow in faith. The Apostle Paul says, letting faith impact our lives. Then lastly, think about how our character is connected. He talked about purity. Think about how our character is connected to purity. What do you look at? What do you think about? Character connected to our purity. Our sexual integrity. He said, don't wait for marriage because marriage won't change your sexual impurity. It won't change that. You might be getting more sex in marriage, and you will, but it won't change your character. Marriage won't. It won't change your sexual integrity. Many times we feel that marriage will solve my lust problem. The way I look at women and what I do with them in my head. Marriage will solve that. We think that. I don't know what you guys really think because 
Honestly, I don't talk to you about much stuff like that. But many times we think marriage will solve. <laughs> Listen, when I get married, I won't be thinking about her and him or her and, and just all that goes on there sexually. We think about that. And maybe we think when I get married, it'll all my thoughts and my lust will all just go away. They'll just go away because I'll be in love and, and uh, that'll solve it. Many times we feel that marriage will solve my lust problems. Folks, it won't. The problem with getting married with a lust problem is that you will now be married and your lust problem will just have a ring on it. That's all. And you say, well, so what? It won't. I'll just keep it a secret. <laughs> it causes problems. It causes problems in our lives. Listen, I can tell you firsthand. It causes problems in your relationship. If you bring that problem into your marriage, it causes problems. It's just a lust problem now with a ring on it. With a ring on it. Marriage doesn't solve a lust problem. Folks, before marriage, let God develop your character. Like now is the time to let God develop your character. Looking at our lives and saying this, Search me, O God, to see if there be any wicked way in me. You could pray that as often as it's applicable to you. At times in my life, I could have prayed it, and I should have prayed that every day of my life. Search my heart, oh God, and show me myself. Show me myself instead of bringing my problems into my marriage. Because I did. I did. I brought them all. <laughs> oh, I'm, it, I look back now, and honestly, I could cry for what I brought into our marriage. I could cry for all that. And Donna was, said, of course I didn't tell her anything. I just didn't tell her. I looked at all kind of pornography and I, this and that. Of course you don't tell because you're living this life that you're thinking will change. But all you do is just put a ring on it. And it doesn't necessarily change. Folks, we don't build a life of righteousness on a foundation of sin. You just don't. If you want to marry someone with a strong character, then you develop a strong character. You develop a strong character. Let God work in you. Don't wait to clean up later on that real life. You, you wait to, go, to clean up later uh, when real life happens. Folks, I tell you this. Singles, I tell you this. Real life happens right now. Real life is happening right now. Three qualities you need before marriage. To be secure in Christ. Number two, to have a strong character before marriage. And you can develop all this after marriage. And you can. And then number three, lastly, we're going to be planted in community. Planted in community. I'll tell you what I mean by that. Planted in community. If you want a relationship that's strong and God-honoring, then I tell you this. Strong and God-honoring, I tell you this. Your friends and community really matter. Your friends and community really matter. Friends and close community is one of the predictors of marriage success. Friends and community is a predictor of marriage success. Who do you hang with? Who do you hang with in your life? Even this, what you did, think about what you did before the wedding, the night before the wedding says something. Some people say, well, good night, you go to a strip club, don't you? Go to a strip club where you get just, just liquored up with all your buddies. <clears throat> the odds of marital success, they don't go upward when you think about those things, they trend downward. Like, that's where you're headed. Why? Because who, because who you're with 
again, reflects who you are. Reflects who you are. In your notes, I put this, the strength of your community will shape the quality of your marriage. The strength of your community will shape the quality of your marriage. Show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. Not 100%, but a good high percentage. Show me your friends, and I'll show you. I'll show you your future. Proverbs 13, verse 20. It says this. It says this in this way. It says, walk with the wise and become wise. For a companion of fools suffers harm. That's from the wisest man who ever lived, the Solomon of the Old Testament. Folks, if you want to have a good relationship, hang with those who have good relationships. If you want to have a good relationship, hang with those that have a good relationship. One very important thing Don and I learned from others in reading good marriage material was this, how to fight, how to fight. Good couples fight fair. They don't say things that just escalate. Now, that doesn't mean we have a perfect record, because I personally do not have a perfect record and that. But good marriages, <coughs> good couples fight fair. You know how to fight, because every couple fights. In their way, every couple fights. But good marriages fight fair fair. Other couples fight dirty and they wound each other. So they have wounds even after that issue is settled. Now they have wounds from the fight because they don't know how to fight. Learn how to fight fair because all couples fight. Learn how to have conflict and fight fair during the conflict. Also learn this. Learn to have fun together that, that was a, really a no-brainer for Don and I. We both have the same likes and things like that. We've skied. We've done all kinds of things together like that. We just like being together like that. And then even this, even intimacy. Learn it well. Learn the power of intimacy. In, uh, intimacy. The power of intimacy, sexual relations, physical intimacy creates emotional intimacy emotional int intimacy last page for anybody counting it compounds even more intimacy if you have good physical intimacy it helps with the other parts of in intimacy we've always had friends with good marriages we've always had friends with good marriages but we also have had friends of all types. I've had friends that were addicted here and that, but I say this, we didn't pay close attention to some of that. We paid close attention to those who we wanted to become like. We paid close attention to that. Those who we wanted to become like. Listen, folks, Last page, and I want to tell you this. Things to take away from this message. You don't attract what you want. Oh, please hear that. Kids, we are winding down now. The wheels are on the ground, and we're coming to a halt. But I want you to hear this. You don't attract what you want. You attract what you are. And sometimes we are very sorry what we got. Because when we start to change and they don't, we're stuck with what we've got because we attracted what we are. You don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. Become the type of person that you're looking for. Become the type of person that you're looking for. And then know this, the primary purpose of this life is to live with undivided devotion to Jesus. Then this in Psalms 34, 3, says this for all of us. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name forever.
in our lives. The end. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for, honestly, Lord, for even your instruction in marriage and relationships in Scripture. Thank you for the encouragement you have given us. Thank you for the encouragement and direction for our hearts. It always so difficult in the heat of the moaning, moment and when we have to make decisions on relationships. It's very difficult. Sometimes it's very difficult. But I ask you to help us, Lord. Help us to take heed before marriage, even to live for you even now. If there's one here today that does not know you as their Savior, Lord, I ask you today, would they receive you as their Savior today and ask you to be Lord of their life? I ask you to do that in them with heads bowed and eyes closed. If you'd like to receive Jesus as your Savior, you would say, Pastor, I do. I would like to ask Jesus Christ to be my Savior today. Would you pray this prayer quietly in your heart to the Lord Jesus? Prayer goes like this, Dear Lord Jesus, I realize that my sin has caused so many problems in my life and has separated me from you, Lord. I ask you today to forgive me of my sin. I turn from my sin and I turn to you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to be my Savior today. Thank you for saving me. With heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you and you prayed that prayer today and you asked Jesus to be your Savior, would you slip up your hand and say, I just want to pray for you? Slip up your hand. Father, thank you. With those that were here today and those that even heard things that we could do in our lives, directions we could take with relationships. Help us, Lord. Please help us to take steps towards great relationships. To secure in Christ. To character changes. And then to community changes. I ask you to help us, Lord. We know not what's on the morrow, Lord. There was a young man in Harrisburg even this week that was shot to death on the football team. I ask you to help us, the Lord, because we don't know what's on the morrow. Help us, Lord, to live for you and decide for you this very day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Go ahead and stand to your feet one last time, please. We're going to close with the final song. If anybody has prayer or a need to speak with someone, or you have any people down front here,